Now that we learned a bit about co-authoring, let's discuss some of the changes that are made in Teams when you're working on a document. Traditionally, we may co-author it in a Word document or PowerPoint via its own application. The reason why we're recommending using Teams for your co-authoring is that there's a couple of nifty little features that Teams offers for working with your teammates in real time. Let's take a look at it. So as you can see here, we're still working on our meeting agenda. And as you can see, there's a couple great features that Teams offers when you're co-authoring with, in this case, Ethan. At the top of the taskbar, I can see Ethan's name. The reason why that's there is that if I click on it, it'll actually show me the location of where Ethan's in on the page. So let's say, for example, we're working on a document that's 15 pages long. And I'm making edits on page two, but Ethan is down on page 15. And I want to, for whatever reason, take a look at some of the edits Ethan's making. Let's scroll up to his image, click on go to location, and as you can see, Ethan's name pops up, so I know exactly where they're located there. A couple other features that co-authoring in, in Teams offers is the conversation tab. If I click on conversations, essentially what I can do is have exactly what it says, a conversation, a chat with my teammates on a document. The important thing to note about this, however, is that it's not just for the folks working on the document. If I start a conversation here, let's say, for example, hi, team, I want to get everyone's opinion on our current agenda. So it's just a nice little message here. You may think that the conversation tab will only work for folks who are accessing the document, but in fact, as you're going to see on the other half screen, on Maddie's screen, it actually shows up in the general tab of your team's channel. So anyone who's a member of that team's channel now has access to that conversation. So you can see we already have a reaction from Ethan. And that, that applies for anyone who's on the document or not. That's very important to mention because you may want to be careful with this. You may not want to flood your team's channel with a bunch of conversations when you only meant to use it for the folks working on the document. A way to avoid that issue is instead of using the conversation tab, move on over to the left hand side and use the comment section. Now the comment section only can only be seen by folks who are accessing the document. As you can see, there's already a couple comments here. We've assigned Tina to take a look at this information here for this agenda. Um, I've, I've, been, I've commented asking if we had a tentative date for our website rollout. And we can go ahead and make a new comment by clicking on the new comment section here. And let's try to get Ethan back on this document. Say, Ethan Kane, do we need to have a PowerPoint created to discuss market strategies? And now on Ethan's screen, they should get a little blip notifying them that we've reached out to them, and hopefully they'll jump back in the document and reply to us at some point there. So again, the conversation tab is when you want to make a larger note or post for the entire team, whoever has access to the channel. Comments is when you're working directly in the document and only want people who are working in the document to see or make edits, et cetera. A couple other neat features that you can do when you're co-authoring a document in Teams is this little icon here that says catch up. Oh, great, we got a reply. This could be great, Stephen Mercy, can you start this please? Great, so now Stephen will get a notification and then they'll also hop on in the document at some point and help us out here. But going back to the catch up tab here, when we click on this, let's say for example, we were working on a document but I had to head out for lunch or I had a meeting or an emergency phone call. If I jump back into the document at a later point, I can use the catch up tab to actually keep track of any changes that were made while I was away. And again, that could be great because sometimes you may not work on a document for a few days or, you know, if you set up the PowerPoint on Monday but can't get, have access to it till Thursday, use the catch-up tab to track what the team is doing. And last but not least, we have two other features here. We have the editor, which actually gives you an editor score. And that's just an, a neat little way to see. Let's say, for example, you're working on a script or working on a presentation you're going to give out to an external client. You want to make sure you have proper spelling, grammar, um, and the editor will actually give you a nice editor score here. It lets you know things like what are your spelling mistakes are at, if you have too many grammars, is it clear, is there a clear language, um, how's your vocabulary. Uh, so again, just a cool little feature that you can use with the team to make sure that you're working the best. I always like to, I always feel proud when I get a 98 point something editor score. 
And to the right of that, we have the Designer tab. What's really neat about the Designer tab is as Ethan's editing on my document, I'm not actually allowed to use the Designer tab. What the Designer tab does is it essentially changes the entire format of your document. This is more so used for things like PowerPoints, um, but you can imagine that it can be pretty messy if Ethan's typing away, making some edits, and all of a sudden I change the whole design or the whole template of the document. Um, so that's a great thing that Teams integrated here, letting you know, hey, someone else is editing on this document. We're not going to make any major format changes. So that's just a highlight of some of the, the tools offered when you're co-authoring a document in Teams. It's also really important to know that you can co-author from a variety of sources. You can co-author from the Teams app. You can co-author from the desktop application, as well as your mobile devices. So again, we highly recommend moving away from just starting in the applications, unless that's really your prerogative and where you feel best but really starting to learn how to integrate all these applications into Teams and making this the collaborative workspace it was meant to be. We hope this video helped. Make sure to click the thumbs up and click the subscribe button right here. And click the link above to check out our Limelight classes, a free virtual live training. See you in the next video.